her rusty wheels and knew I'd take her home. I brought her to my farm in an Amish neighborhood where simple living's valued. She'd be loved and understood. I put her on a treadle stand and coaxed her wheel to turn. I felt her joy and easy with my study and concern. I cleaned her and I owed her, showed her off to all my friends, repaired the hurts of years of years, and let her sew again. This morning, I have pulled her out of my tank and used a Scotch Bright uh, Dremel pad and some wire wheels and everything to get the remaining pieces off. And I think that she's looking really good. I will give her a wipe down with my pre painting, you know, wash before I put her first coat of primer on her, but she still needs to be masked off. I'm leaving the wheel on, um, maybe. I will see. It was a chore getting the wheel off my last new home because they're put on with a lot of pins and um, everything inside of her is functioning well enough. I'm thinking I might just leave it on. On her wheel, she had some very, very damaged plating. You know, it was only about a fourth of it still on in bad shape. So I went ahead and with a light sandpaper took the rest of that off. And I'm just going to polish up the wheel with sandpaper, you know, going with increasing finer grits as I go after I get it painted. But for right now, that is done. Let me tip her over here. You can see the bottom is clean. Um, everything is moving around. It, it is, you know, just fresh iron here, so it's kind of ugly. Now, I wanted to also show you this is the back plate all ready to get painted. This is that front plate, the same. Um, now I have a donor, an organ donor machine. So this is the original front plate. It still has the serial numbers on it. But from my organ donor machine, I got a black, a back plate. And this, look how, look how much cleaner that is. I'm still so amazed at how that works. But that's gonna be the plates, which look a lot better. Now, if you remember, the um, bobbin winder was, this part was broken, and I, off my organ donor machine, which is a new, well, it's similar to a new home. It's new ideal, but it's very similar to a new home. Um, I have this bobbin winder. So, and it fits, it fits well. It's, it would be in line with the wheel. Let me show you here. If I was to set this on, it fits on the bracket and the little part that would line up with the belt on the winder lines up where it does on the machine. You know, so that's good. So I need to clean this up because the steel part on this or the iron part on this will be getting painted, but it needs to be totally taken apart first. So what I want to show you is that she has a complete set of parts now. I'm going to go ahead and get her masked off, wiped down, and then we'll get started painting. Morning. I wanted to show you what she's looking like. I went ahead and gave her a coat of primer just because once I got her wiped down with my cleanser, um, if I didn't give her a coat really quickly, and then there was a chance that she could flash rust up again, and then I just have to wipe her down again. So I went ahead and hung her up. You can see behind me, I got her front plate and back plate swinging back there, and they are also painted. I should turn the lights on in here. Um, the primer's going to show pretty clearly all of the little problems that are on her. That's just in the metal itself. I am going to be sanding this down before I actually put her finish color on um, to smooth it out some. But because there was such a huge amount of rust on her, there is some pitting which will 
impact the texture of the machine. And that's just the way it's going to be. But um, we're going to be making her black again. And hopefully, with enough of the layers and the sanding and everything, it's going to disguise a lot of it. So I'm happy with the way that she looks right now. I'm going to go ahead and let her hang because I've got some other things I need to take care of. Um, but next step will be to take her down and with a really fine grit sandpaper, give her a nice sanding and wipe down before I get started on her final color. Okay, so I decided that I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera on while I am cleaning up this bobbin winder. And earlier today, I just came in and sprayed some penetrating oil on it to let it sit for a while and made sure I could crack the screws, which I can. It's rather hot in here, so I'm gonna turn my fan back on. Sorry about the noise. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take off, well, first thing I'm gonna do is change the bit in my screwdriver. And uh, I do love my little pink set, you know, the Chapman tool, vintage sewing machine set. It's very handy. But I'm going to take off the little thread guide part first. And okay. Now unscrew this main part. And being aware of how everything is sitting here. All right, I ended up having to hold it from the back with my very grippy pliers while I undid the front because just trying to hold it with a screwdriver in the back was not working. So I got my little nut, round to nut. And then this should just come out, should, should. Well, let me just finish unscrewing it maybe. Okay. So this is what we have. This piece is going to separate. All right, that'll come off. And then I can clean the little gear wheel and this part separately. They are very, very rusty and gooey, but I think that it'll work out. So just give me a moment to tap this. Hang on. There it goes. She just needed some encouragement. Okay, so I'll have to clean this up, obviously. And the rest of this I am just leaving as is. I'm not taking this off, not taking this off, but I will be cleaning it up very well and doing what I can to get this paint off so that then I can primer this iron part. Okay, so I have gotten my bobbin winder cleaned up as much as possible. The little uh, cast iron piece and um, the wheel are in the e-tank, you know, waiting for it to do its magic. And I have pulled, this has sat, I actually painted it a couple days ago. I want it to be super, super hard. And I have just sanded it with like 800 grit sandpaper and a very lightweight scotch pad to try to even everything out, smooth it out. Unfortunately, the rust was bad enough that there is some textural acne type stuff going on here. Thankfully, it's in the back. You know, the front looks pretty darn smooth, but the back is going to have a few little bumps. You know, the paint will cover that and everything, but it's, you, you're going to be able to tell that it's not the original texture. I think that's going to be okay um, here might be able to see what I'm talking about right there, okay? That's just from the rest. It is what it is. So, now I'm ready to go ahead and put the uh, color coat on this. And it is going back to original gloss black. This is the paint I am using. Um, again, you know, it's the right temperature and everything and once I paint it I will leave the building and just let it sit for probably a couple days before I come back and touch it. Um, with this you know you shake it till the ball moves freely and then you shake it for another minute and when you're applying it you paint a coat, wait a few minutes, paint another coat. You don't want it to get completely dry in between coats 
because that could cause trouble. I'll probably give it at least two coats after the second coat. We'll see what it looks like. So anyhow, yep, that is it. Next time you'll see the machine, she shall, she shall be black again. Hello and welcome back. So the machine is painted black and it's been a couple days so I think that she is good to go ahead and get her decals put on. I want to show you the little bobbin winder. It's cleaned up. It obviously does not get decals. At least I don't think so. Um, these decals are from the Etsy shop sewing machines and decals. Um, if you're curious, that's her info. That's all I know. But um, it, they came with a instruction sheet, and it looks like these go on differently. My water slide ones I make myself, you usually set on and then slide the paper out from underneath. These you put face down and then peel the paper off, kind of like a tattoo paper. So these are the specific ruby ones. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and just get them all cut out. And I like to cut them so that, actually I'm going to use different scissors. I like to cut them out so that I am fairly close to the um, print on the decals, you know, but not right up to it. Just because I don't want a whole lot of uh, residual film that I need to deal with. So you can see I'm leaving probably about a sixteenth of an inch away from my print. So let me go ahead and get all of these cut out and set aside and then we'll start decorating our little machine. Okay so I got them all cut out and I went back in the house and found a reference photo for the decal placement and it looks like they sent me several extra decals, you know, love online how they have things like this. Now there's one thing that I noticed while I was cutting these out. Um, when you go to put decals on the way they want, where you put it down and then peel the paper off, that means that the image is reversed when it's printed. And so like on here, you can see the word Ruby is reversed so that when you put it on, it'll read correctly. So their words Ruby are good. Um, my concern is this is the little decal that goes right in the middle of the plate right here. And the new home logo has the little running dog, but they didn't reverse the words. Okay. So... At this point, I'm thinking the words are tiny. It'll give the impression, you know, of, a, of the original. But if you just go to read the tiny, tiny word, new home, it's going to be backwards. But I don't think that that's a huge thing. When I'm going to play with some of the extra little ones that they sent me just to see um, if I can get it to stick upside down because I will be clear coating this once the decals are on. If it looks like I can, I'll try to put it on backwards. If not, we're just going to go as it is. So I have my clean dish here. I am adding some water and the instructions say to add a squirt of detergent to ease in the sliding process. So, you know, adding a squirt of detergent, nothing fancy, just a little dish soap. And it says to soak the decals for 30 to 60 seconds. So before I actually do all of the machine ones, what I'm going to do is get them laid out and get my game plan so I know what I need to deal with here. What are for sure the extras, you know, that goes up there, this goes up here. And then, um, once I know for sure I have the right inventory, then I'll play with my extra and see what I can get it to do. Okay, so once I was done with that, I only have these two little guys that I don't see a place for. And I'm actually thinking that I, I might put these on an accessory box, paint up and make an accessory box for it. So I am just going to go ahead and get started. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to do, the first one I'm going to do is this little separate plate here. So let's see here. The process I'm going to do for this one is what I'm going to do for all of them. So let me just put that there where you can see it. Move these guys out of the way. So I put it into my little 
pan of water somewhat off camera and I'm going to stick it in there and uh, you want it says you want to put it in there until until the decal I would say is starting to feel loose but you don't want it to fall off is what they say and so that feels pretty good to me all right so I'm turning it upside down and I'm going to set it on my piece here And it says, gently slide the blue cardboard off the top of the decal. If you need to reposition decal, slide it into place. But don't hold too firmly when sliding or it will stretch. Okay. All right. So let's see here. I'm going to need to do this with this set down. Hang on a sec. I want to get this as close to its real position as possible because breaking decals is no fun. All right. Hmm. Okay. Thankfully, when you first put them on, there's enough water that you can shift them a bit. And I'm trying to make it so that there's a hole over here that a screw goes through. And the way this is sitting, there is decal that's going right over that hole, which I don't like, but I don't think there's a way around that. And I can see that the way these are made, you can't put them upside down. So the little running dog decal, it's just going to read backwards because they're printed in such a way that all of the, the, the paints are layered so that the decal um, is going to show up best when you put it on the way that it's intended, which is good. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of smooth it out here, try to get all that water out from underneath it and get it into its final position. And then I'll show you what it looks like at that point. All right, so here it is. I think it's beautiful. Um, right here where this little dimple is, where the screw goes, what I've had to do is make several little slits into the decal so that it can, you know, form around that and then just kind of using a, a Q-tip to push it into place. The hardest part about decals is making a flat decal go on a curved surface and you're going to get wrinkles. It's just a matter of hiding them. So um, I see a couple tiny little guys up here, but they're fairly inconspicuous. So I don't think that that's a bad deal on this one, but the, the hardest part on this little piece is this that's coming around this curve. Um, once the screw is set in there, I think that will attract all the attention to it, but it's beautiful. It's going to work really well. So I am just going to use that same process of one by one getting the decal. Oops, that's just the backing paper. Getting the decal, getting it sufficiently damp, placing it, peeling off the backing paper and then smoothing it out just over and over and over again and I'll show you what she looks like when she's done. All right I've got her pretty much done. Um, the face plate gets this decal. I am not going to put this on until tomorrow. There was a drip on the face plate and I had to fix that so she actually has a coat of paint that's one day fresher than these and I want to make sure that that paint has plenty of time to get a little more set before I put this decal on. But you'll get the idea of what it looks like. So let me go ahead and turn the camera down. She's pretty much as she's going to be. Once this sets overnight, um, I will come back and give her a clear coat with my Diamond Coat aerosol spray. I'll go get the can and show you. Okay, so these are the paints I've been using. Really, really like this for using, for making machines black again. If you want to go back to, you know, original looking, highly recommend this one, this high performance enamel. Um, this is my clear coat. I've used it in the can. I kind of like using the aerosol better than the can, you know. It's about 28 bucks for a can of this stuff, but it does a lot of machines. Just make sure you clean out the tip each time you use it. So, um, like I said, I'm going to give her a day or so to rest. Then I'll give her one or two coats of this. We will see what it looks like. 
get the face plate done, and then we'll move on to getting her put together. So I hope this was helpful for you. Thanks for watching. Hello, everybody. I wanted just to give you a quick update to what's going on with this machine. I'm editing the video right now. And at this point where the video stops, um, that night I came into my house and I just contacted the decal seller just to let them know about that issue with the little running dog. And they were very kind and said, you know what, we're going to send you out a corrected decal. We'll get it to you as soon as possible. However, they are in Australia, so it's going to take, you know, a little bit of time for processing and shipping and things like that. So what I decided to do is, um, since I'm going to be getting a corrected center decal with the little running dog, um, I went ahead and I peeled that center decal back off and cleaned up any residual sticky it might have left. And I've clear coated the machine without that center decal, just because it could be a couple weeks before it gets here, you know? And I think it would be good to have it so that the words are going the correct way. So other than that, the quality of the decals is great. I think that they're really pretty. I like the way that they layer their paints so that you do get a gold look to them. I think that that's great quality. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and proceed putting the machine together. And when I do get that final decal, I'll just put it on, you know, hide things around it and clear coat over that particular decal at that point. And I think that's going to be just fine. So let's continue with our project. I found an antique sewing machine, forgotten and alone. I touched her rusty wheel and knew I'd take her home. I brought her to my farm. Where simple living's valued, she'd be loved and understood. I put her on a treadle stand and coaxed her wheel to turn. I felt her joy and easing with my study and concern. I cleaned her and I owed her, showed her off to all my friends, repaired the hurts of years of Europe. So again, 